Hi guys, welcome back to August Love Story, the channel. My name is Artika. And I'm Tommy. And today we are reviewing Married at First Sight, season 13, episode 5. That episode is titled Keys to My Heart. If you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Are you ready to do this review? Let's do it. Um, We'll start out with, or at least the first couple I wrote anything about, was Jose and Rachel. Um, right. I'm just gonna say this and get it out of the way. I'm waiting on the big blow up between them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not to say that it's going to end things, but they're too. Oh my God, you're so perfect for me about everything that there's going to be something, some type of. It has to ah. be. It's inevitable. Yes. Um, they kiss so much. I was like, we didn't kiss that much. Ooh, they be kissing. <laughs> Who did I say that about? I don't I know. I think it might have been them. It probably was. was like, they know they be kissing. Um, in this episode, she was uh, she brought up the idea that she didn't like him asking to brush her teeth, and that she was more of an independent person than. And I don't um, think that that was a, a shot at her independence. I don't think so either. She's grown. She should know how to brush her teeth. I think he thought it was cute and it wasn't. Yeah. I don't it's, think it's a shot at her being independent. I think it's re uh, weird. Yeah. Um. What else happened with them? I um, put um, she wants to see how they're different more than how they're the same and she doesn't like that he tried to feed her. Like she keeps taking it at stabs at her independence. Mm -hmm. And I just, ugh, I don't get it. I, I mean, I get it, but I don't yeah, get it I think, on both sides. I think what he's going to run to an issue is, is knowing how to provide for her mm -hmm. um, because of the idea that she has to do everything on her own, where mm -hmm. she thinking that she has to do that and him wanting to be her be all and, you know, provide for, for his family. And I, I always feel like when it comes to providing for your family from a man's perspective or from my perspective, because mm -hmm. people think differently, but from my perspective on providing it's what do we come up with to ensure that we have a roof over our head to ensure that we have lights, water, food, you know, the necessities. And then also we can get some of the wants that we need, you know, or that some of the wants that we, you know, that we want. So I know that a lot of her issue with um, the way. Let me, okay. Let me start back. The things that he wants to do are weird. Yeah. Like she is nah, not a three year old. Right. You don't need to feed her. You don't need to brush her teeth. Right. I can't wait for the day that I don't have to brush Lily's teeth. <laughs> like right. I just, yeah. she she's not a toddler. She can do those things. However, um, he keeps saying he wants to provide for her. He wants to provide for her. He wants to provide for her. And she's ingrained in her mind. I think she said her dad told her. Don't ever be in a position where someone does everything for you because they can put you out of whatever it mm -hmm. is and you're yeah. left with nothing. Yeah. Um, I think she needs to rethink this. Instead of thinking that you'll be left with nothing, you should be think thinking that you'll be left with everything that you came in with. Because if he's taking care of everything, you get to keep all your money. <laughs> what are you spending it on? <laughs> also, also another thing to look at too when it comes to them is um her understanding how she wants to be provided for mm -hmm. like what is it that you want you know him to provide or what is it that you want him to do because they was talking about a living situation and i think i said it to you was like they've been married what three days at this point mm -hmm. and they're still on the honeymoon i'm like yeah you got to have these conversations but you don't have to have them right now you know, it's it's good to, you know, bring it up and, and talk about it kind of sort of. But you also want to get to a point to where you're still learning to enjoy each other, because if you start off with all the heavy stuff, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and you're not learning to enjoy each other, you still you you're gonna be put in a position to where you're kind of resenting the person. And she has totally different thoughts about things than I did. Like when I first moved in with you, I was like, his name needs to be the only one on the lease so I can make a smooth getaway yeah. if I need to. And she's like, no, I need my name on everything. And I'm like, mm. but they're married though. That's that's the biggest difference between when you moved in with me versus um you know them is that they're in divorce they're they're married and also they're not looking to get divorced just yet i mean i get that but you know yeah thinking of it from a different vantage point um let's see we covered her wanting to contribute um let's see the only thing we missed was that they went fishing they did definitely went fishing and um that is fun by the way i've never gone fishing i was never allowed my granddad said i was too loud <laughs> i was so scared to fish away yeah. um yeah he taught her how to fish she enjoyed that he enjoyed teaching her how to do something um last thing that i wrote was that um before bed, they wanted to talk about finances, which she feels is going to be a big point of contention. Um, his family mentioned that, you know, like he has a dry erase board with all of his expenses for the month and he makes sure to save, save, save. And she's like, I save, but my savings account never goes above mm-hmm. a certain amount before I'm like, treat yourself. <laughs> yeah, um, that's going to be. I thought that was going to be a huge conversation just because of how particular he is. I think a lot of the things are going to come from him, mm-hmm. you know, and on how particular he is on, on certain things and then how free she lives, you know. Um, I think that there just has to be a conversation. And she's like, it feels like he's putting her on an allowance. I was like, but you brought this up. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of those conversations. I feel like, yeah, you got to have it. But enjoy your honeymoon. I guess um, with finances, you have to figure out the way that works best for you. He figured mm-hmm. out the way that works best for them, for him. And then we find a way to meet in the middle yeah. of whatever those yeah, things definitely. are. Because life is no fun if all you do is save money yeah. and you don't get to spend any of it. No, definitely, definitely. All right. So next couple was Bao and Johnny. They make me smile. Yep, they do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it opened up with Johnny saying that he slept really well until he woke up because there were some small animals in the room and the small <laughs> animals happened to be Bao. Yeah. Um, we later find out that, you know, point of contention for her is snoring. She was saying that she did a sleepaway camp and she was scared to go to sleep because she snores. She snores. And I'm like, girl, if you don't get your rest. Right. No, nobody kept like only people that's bothering <laughs> is the people that hear it. Go to sleep. That's simple, man. <laughs> you say that as someone who snores. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, I can't help it. You know? Um, I get it looked at. So it's like it's I th- I thought that was big, but I also thought it was good that she told him that. Um, how insecure she was. And I and I also f- like liked how he Tried to assure her that, hey, it it's okay. I'm joking. He did this so he could get some butt. So he, he did it. It didn't work. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he did it. You know, it definitely didn't work. But, uh, you know, he, he tried to make her feel comfortable. And I think that's part of the work mm-hmm. is you definitely try to make your, your spouse feel comfortable ar- around you and with things that are things that they're really insecure about or, or not really comfortable with. Um, I would hate to be so tired and afraid to go to sleep because I'm scared people are going to hear me snore. Yeah. I'd be like, yep, it was me. What can you do? Expect- when I was pregnant, oh, yeah. I was snoring so much. Yeah. S- Life was just tiring. I don't woke myself up snoring before. I have too. <laughs> While I was pregnant. Oh my gosh. Man. Um, so they talk about going and having a pool day, and Bao shares that she has basically an ungodly amount of bathing suits that have never seen the light of day. Um, she's like, I parade around my house in them because I'm not gonna wear them outside. <laughs> um, she's like, people collect lingerie, I collect bathing suits. I was like, all right, do you, sis? She said Conan is her hall pass. <laughs> I was like, he was like, Conan? yeah, if I could watch. 
It was like all of this is weird. That's, that's weird. This, <laughs> this whole entire this whole conversation, conversation is weird. <laughs> this entire ordeal is very weird. Um. So everybody gets together at the pool, Sans, Michaela, and Zach, yeah. which we find out about them a little bit later. And Mirla also does not show up. Um, Gil finds out everybody out here kissing except for him and his wife, and he feels a way about it. Yeah. Um, Johnny and Bao told the group that they knew each other mm-hmm. um, before they got married. So it was like people were feeling like, oh, you cheated. But <laughs> <laughs> I think we we like like Johnny and Bob because their um, relationship or their marriage mirrors ours so much. Except for we didn't get married at first Except sight. we didn't get married at first sight. It took a few years. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so um, them telling everybody the conversation about the friend date and Johnny ghosting her. Oh, they're yeah, like, I forgot about that. They're like, ah, oh, you ghosted her. And he's like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> In actuality, he did. He did ghost he her. And everybody her. agrees that he ghosted her. Um, so after that, Johnny got Jose to meet him at some random shop and they go shopping for a date that he has planned with Bao. He takes her on a picnic. He picked up Bao a extra extra large shirt yeah. for whatever reason. He thought that that was normal. Um, And got him some well he already had his khakis. He got yeah. him a buttoned up shirt. Yeah. And they went and had a picnic on the beach. She said she had never been on a picnic before and she thought that that was really sweet. He thought he was gonna get some, and that's when that night they had the conversation yeah. about the. What was triggers. funny? What was funny about that whole ordeal with the picnic and stuff? <laughs> uh, Bow was like, "You pay full price for this," and she did. <laughs> I was like, "Okay, Bow." Right, and so uh, obviously we know Bow is the negotiator <laughs> of the couple. I mean, she's a person that you take to. Um, some type of little flea market situation oh, with yeah. because she's going to talk everybody down. Oh, yeah. Uh, he just, like, the purpose of the picnic was so he can find out how Bao feels about him romantically mm-hmm. because he was like, he's really liking her and everything like that. Um, so at the picnic, he told her, I really like you. Um, he's just not sure how she feels because he give, she gives him hot and cold feels, you know. Mm-hmm. And so she finally told him that, hey, I like you, too, or the feeling is mutual. <laughs> um, and that really put a smile on on his face and made him feel really good about things and where they're going. Um, and, and then yeah. he thought he's going to get some and he didn't. <laughs> Next couple we that have definitely <laughs> is Mirla and Gil. All right. Um, I you know every time Mirla talks, I feel sorry for Gil. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think I felt that way because even with like, I can't think of a couple that was like, oh, they're not gonna make it. They're not for each other. Um. I mean, there's obviously been couples like we had Olivia and Ryan. I yeah. mean, Olivia and Brett. Yeah. Um, we had Henry and Christina. I'm trying to think of what other couple was like that that I was just like Ugh, every time I watch. I um, but with them, all of my growls are at Mirla, and she complained too much, man. I think that's. The, I'm, I'm hoping that's production. But it doesn't seem like it is. Because it can't be production because she's saying all these she, things. Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm just like, it, it can't be. Because they could be editing all of the complaints back to back. Yeah. But yeah, she's saying all these things. And she complained about milk, man. Okay. I get it. As someone who does not do dairy milk, I get it. But I don't, I don't know. It's I don't still have- a sense for me. It's like, all right, they they brought you the wrong milk. Just call them. just call them and, and you know you don't have to like it's it's the milk thing stands out because she complained about everything else. Mm-hmm. And then it's like dog milk. <laughs> just call them and say hey you you brought me the wrong milk. I need you know, more. I need different milk. Um, and the reason that I brought this up in the very beginning with you know I feel like Mirla is the thing the the reason that I like growl or sigh at this couple is because I remember reading through our comments and somebody was like, what is Gil going to change? I'm like, 
the only thing that people were saying that Mirla needed to change at that point was her viewpoint on finances. Mm hmm. And I don't think anybody said that Gil didn't need to change. But at this point, Gil has not done anything that we're like, oh, my God, this is crazy. He's going to have to give some or even, you know, married people give on that because he literally has not complained or had an objection to anything. Mm -hmm. It has literally been I am just trying to get to know you. And that is all met with a brick wall. And I think that it's the speculation that people do of of like people saying, oh, Gil's going to have to change something, too. And it's like nobody's saying he doesn't. We're just like, gosh, what is wrong with Mirla? <laughs> yeah, like like the thing about it is, is with her, she admits in the in the episode that she's a whiner. I think she said that before. Yeah, she said it like on the last two or three yeah. episodes. But it's it's like, why has this behavior been allowed? You know, that's probably one of the reasons why she. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah, it, it really much is very much so mm-hmm. is. But it's it's like for me, I look at how Gil is actually trying. You know, yes. he's he's given a valiant effort because a lot of people would be turned off from her attitude mm-hmm. and then would just go about doing their own little thing. Because the only time we've ever really, truly seen her smile is when he said, well, what if I gave you a Cartier bracelet? That got a big grin. And then she was super excited about the macarons. Yeah, he was like, these are just like chocolate chip cookies. He's like, they're bougie cookies. Yeah. <laughs> the fitting to her he called her bougie that was too funny but <laughs> but the thing that i like um about them is that they're able to joke with each other and nobody has taken it personal I, she might be she she may or may have <laughs> not but you know it seems like when he calls her bougie or high maintenance and stuff like that she kind of like rolls with it and you know and she throws her little jokes out at him too but it's it's a. Uh, you know, this this couple is going to be a very interesting dynamic to see how they get it together. You know, um, the kissing. Mm-hmm. They had sat down and talked about kissing and she explained that she's not a person that wants to do that um, at first, you know, because mm-hmm. she said that she's very. Um, what was the word she used? Um, Touchy. Yes, that was the word she used. And I was like, it can't be. She was like, after I get to know you. And she's giving me very, very, very much so Jeffy with her. You're a stranger. stranger. Like it's it's like you have to you have to (laughs) remove that stranger block. Why are you here? If strangers are so repulsive to you, why Why are you you here? Right, right. And no, I get it. I get it. Like, yeah, he's a stranger, but take that block Mm -hmm. away. And then also try to get to know him better. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, this man, it, his his like, love language is physical touch, is, mm-hmm. is physical. Um, Give he, him a cuddle. Right. Cuddle with him. Kiss him. You know, rub his head. Yeah. I mean, OK. I imagine Again. that people with bald heads like their head rubbed by their spouse. I oh. would if I had a bald head. I don't know. I look at it like, OK, yes, we I'm are like, three rub, days rub in. my head, please. Nobody's <laughs> expecting them to have had sex in three days. Yeah. Like not pushing Nobody's the, asking for it. Right. Not pushing that narrative at all. But I guess my thought is go. No, go ahead. <laughs> I guess my thought is what else can you do to produce some type of intimacy? And I'm not saying you have to kiss him. A kiss would be nice. Hold his hand. Yeah. But like, show, show him that. Show him some type of aspect of I am in this with you yeah. and I'm going to actively work towards us still being together at the eight week right. mark. Because that's the that's the hard part or that's the thing that's hard to watch mm-hmm. when it comes to her and Gil. It's like you see and Gil attempt to do things, attempt to do things. And the only thing you see from her is her complaining. Yeah, let me rub your feet. No. You know, you're not going to touch <laughs> like me. Like, I have never turned down a foot. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? So, um, he called her a bougie cookie. I was reading my notes. Mm-hmm. And then I saw that and he called her a bougie cookie. Um, they asked about, you know, um, their their past relationships. They've both been in about four. Yeah. Serious relationships. Serious relationships. 
Um, he took her on a water plane, I think is mm-hmm. what they called. Um, and she was like, she gets motion sickness and she really did want to do it, but she I was, was proud of her for being a trooper and doing that. And she, you know, she did it and she did like complain <laughs> throughout the trip. <laughs> it was like she's getting sick. So she, you know. And my cousin and I actually talked about this, which I usually, and I know we're late recording this, but I usually don't talk to people about the episode until we record. Yeah. But we only specifically talked about the seaplane because she's a person who is afraid of heights and gets motion sickness. Yeah. And she was like, either you go with it and you just shut up. She was like, I've done that and been like sick as a dog the rest of the day. She was like, or you just say, no, let's plan something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, she did it. She was a trooper. One star for Mirla out of all the other negative deficits that like we've had of yeah. her and her interactions with him. So I am happy that she did it. I hate that it was at the expense of her being sick yeah. because nobody wants to be sick on vacation. Right, right. But um, <clears throat> I hope that she does come up with something to plan for him herself to make up for ending the trip or the excursion that he had planned yeah. because so far he's um, surprised her with that, the seaplane. And then he's also surprised her with the champagne and the macaroons. Yeah. So like, and the, all we've heard that she's done is worked. Yeah. Maybe it's production. Maybe it's not. <laughs> I was about to say, maybe it's production. Maybe it's Mirla. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's Maybelline. Oh, <laughs> But yeah, so Gil went out to the pool like we explained earlier. I don't know what part he went out to the pool, but um, he was talking about that was after the froth milk. That was after okay. He was talking about Miller, and mm-hmm. I was like, "How is she gonna react to that? Because it's going to get back to her, mm-hmm. and how is she gonna react to it?" And, and I think he didn't mean anything by it. he was just kind of like talking with the with the guys with everybody because mm-hmm. and meeting everybody and uh he was just like i just only got a kiss on the cheek <laughs> i mean there was some negative things that he said about her yes but the kiss on the cheek part was like accurate yeah it's what i got i don't know i think he compared her to like a a toddler or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, so. <laughs> but she was, describes herself in comparison to a toddler. Yeah. She didn't use the toddler word, but like saying that I'm whiny and this yeah. and that says toddler. I just, I'm just curious to see how that interaction is going to go. Very much so. so. Um, Let's see. Moving on to Brett and Ryan. So Brett and Ryan um, have their breakfast and then they go to the pool and meet up with everyone. Um, after the pool situation, Brett and Ryan go and have a couple's massage and Ryan is like kids yesterday. Yeah. Um, sex two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, because you have to have the sex two days ago to get the kid yesterday. Yeah. Um, Brett is just like, hey, we got to take things slow not really, you know, trying to push the narrative. And he said that he definitely absolutely wants kids. And she said she definitely absolutely wants a family. Um, She said she was fine with either way, like because she's getting older, she's fine without with not having kids. Mm -hmm. If that's what her spouse wants, or she's fine with having kids, if that's what her spouse Mm -hmm. wants. But her thing is she wants the mate. Yeah. She wants a family. family. Yeah. And I get it. Um, it was awkward though because they was talking about sex and him being a sexual person while getting the massage while two other people was in there. I was like, "You talking about bad timing to talk about a specific thing?" But okay, <laughs> production was like, "We're going to talk about sex now in five, four. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, they go through their deal breakers. Of course, we see his was kids, hers was family, and then the very last thing that I remember us saying of them is, um. The two of them trying to get in the hammock. Have you ever tried to get in the hammock? Yes. It is difficult. It is very difficult. <laughs> you definitely got to balance I've yourself. never tried to get in the hammock with another person. No, never did that. Um, It uh, all looks cute and all, but... A hammock is tough, man. Mm-hmm. But once you get in there, you're comfortable. Mm-hmm. Because it just hugs you. Yeah. 
Um, so that's all I have for them. You have anything else? No. And last but not least, we have Zach and Michaela. So we find out that Zach tested positive for COVID. Michaela is negative. My assumption is Michaela is going to end up testing positive for COVID. That's my assumption too. They was in each other's throats the night before. Yep. Um, I'm confused why Zach got to stay. Yep. And Michaela was flown back home having had exposure. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that one myself, but. Because I mean, I don't have a medical degree. However, I watch enough of the news. And when you've been exposed, they say that you're supposed to quarantine as well. Putting her in the airport. On a plane. <laughs> on a plane with other people does not sound like quarantine to me. Nah. If you a nurse or a doctor, tell me something I don't know. Because that's the confusing part for me. Um. I know that a lot of it was them saying that they wanted to still be together. I don't really know how people handle protocol within their households when someone tests positive for COVID. Um, I know that it's always the assumption that others have it. I do know someone personally who um, tested positive for COVID and their spouse did not. And they just slept in separate rooms until it was all over with mm-hmm. but they still were in the same house yeah. nobody left and the other person didn't end up getting COVID so yeah. it worked out for them um I just I don't know I don't know man um, I found it <laughs> interesting that you know she was so oh, I want to be around you I want to be with you you know we can hang out we can be here together she, her biggest thing was that she wanted to be with him and his thing was he misses her um, and that um, them being apart is going to hurt them basically getting to this time for them to get to know each other a little bit better mm-hmm. and stuff like that so I looked at that and I was like yeah you're right but are you calling her like you should? Are you, you know, video chatting? And it's not the same, but it's what you got. And then I give a little bit of grace for that, too, because if you're sick, the last thing you want to do is hold right. a phone. Right, right. So, I mean, I guess I don't know what the appropriate thing to do is in this situation. Yeah. I mean, we all have our ideas. I was just more concerned um, with Michaela potentially testing positive for COVID and having exposed others in an mm-hmm. airport and yeah. on a plane yeah. and things like that. So um, I find it interesting that, you know, Rachel and Jose was who Michaela called. Mm-hmm. And like, I would think that the group would find out all together. Like, hey, Zach and Michaela aren't here because Zach got COVID or, you know, or Michaela's gone. But she called Rachel and she met Jose over video chat. And, uh, you know, <laughs> when I think about who Michaela would be close to <laughs> as far as the other uh, brides, mm-hmm. Rachel kind of fits the bill because I don't see it being Mirla. No, not at all. Um, mm-hmm. I think that she would have conversations with Bao, but that wouldn't be like a close. Yeah. They both like to have fun, but I don't think that they'd be chatty Cathy's with each other. Yeah. Rachel is just kind of the safe, I like everybody person. Yeah. So yeah. that's who you reach out to. It just, it made sense in that yeah. moment that she was it. Um, I don't know who Zach would be close to. The guys. I mean, I'm saying which guy? <laughs> like all of them. <laughs> I would think Johnny for him. Yeah, probably. probably. Um, but yeah, I see Michaela and Zach being able to pick back up. I'm still wondering about the Hurricane K, like when that is going to come out and how yeah. it's going to yeah. come out because we know it's coming. We saw it in a preview. Right. Um, you got anything else for nope. any of these couples? No. Um, well, guys, hopefully, at this point, Married at First Sight will be back on track <laughs> for Thursday mornings ish, yeah. sometime yeah. morning yeah. to afternoon. We'll get those videos back out on Thursdays. Um, please forgive us for being late on this one. We've been doing a lot, a whole making lot. making new content, and hopefully, you guys will enjoy that new content as well. Um, put a ring on it. 
Yeah, we, we just got to figure that out. We, we going to figure that one out, too. So. It's probably just going to be <laughs> us finishing, like getting up to the most recent episode. We watched every episode except for the most recent one. Yeah. And we'll probably just make a video summarizing that all yeah. and going from there. We're going to get back on track, though. So. I'm not sure how many episodes are left in the season, yeah. but our hope is to get back on track with that. We'll get there. And move forward this week. You got anything? No, nah, that's it. That's it. All right. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. Comment down below. Let us know what you thought of this week's episode. If you actually have a medical degree, let me know about this COVID situation. Because yeah. I'm just trying to understand. I guess I could call a nurse. I know enough of them. Yeah. yeah. So. Not going to. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's all I got. Bye, y'all. Peace.